Hello, I'm Aaron and welcome back to the Last Stand Gamers channel. So today we're checking out another really cool creation from the Steam Workshop. Now, this is the TC505 Pleasure Cruiser by Camus. And I have to say, this thing combines the best of both small and large ship design. It also really kind of takes a focus on the direction Space Engineers is going with allowing blocks to sit very tightly against each other. This design is very, very well detailed and we'll take a little bit of a tour of it. So let's start our way all the way at the front here. So coming down this really cool stretched out area is actually the cockpit and bridge area of the Pleasure Liner. It's got really detailed interior that we'll have to check out in a moment. As you work its way back along the neck, you'll notice that there's this color changing sort of band that works its way around in this really cool curve pattern onto the roof we'll have a look at that in a second but you can see we've got some windows for the main crew quarters up there at the front we've also got some nice big open windows made of small ships on the side here for the crew just look how they sort of bisect with the larger segments though it's really fantastic just how they managed to merge them two blocks together. Yes, there is still a little bit of shake. You can see the, the clang wiggle happening there. Uh, uh, yes, yes, it's worrying, but it's all holding together so far. So fingers crossed it keeps working. So working our way down the side, you'll notice that there is more small ship blocks used. We've actually got a small ship connector there on the side. And as we work our way down here, you'll notice that we've actually got a little hangar door slash airlock. And that is just a little detailed area that leads to an icy cold hangar bay trapped behind there. Continuing to work down the side, we've got ourselves an awesome looking docking bay, a four pronged one. I've seen a lot of these things on different ships. They seem to be starting to follow maybe, you know, a design that can be used universally. It would be really nice if we could agree on one so that all the ships in space engineers could dock together between creators. But maybe something in the future. So as we come up the side, you'll notice we've got more detailed window areas. So the outer window on these is actually a door. The inner window is, of course, like a little bedroom type setup. But that allows for a little blast door to close and to protect your cabin from various different dangers out there. Or give you a little bit of privacy if you need. From these areas as well, you can see that these are actually glass windows that look into some of the cabins. They've got little makeshift beds in there made out of small grids. Really cool indeed. And just look at the details. And these solar panels overlaid with these other blocks in this section really nice to see that level of detail now coming up onto the top you'll notice how we've got this curved sort of neck area created out of these window blocks that are wrapped around the hull really cool detailing area and what's really nice about this it actually has parachutes that can deploy on the top as well now if we come over to this side both sides are symmetrical to an extent but there is some bonus features like for instance on this side we have this cool sensory radar device that i'm sure could be plugged up with some scripts and it could detect incoming vessels or ships around the pleasure liner so it doesn't get pirated by them nasty space pirates so let's continue working our way along the side so where's the sun? Let's have a look. It's coming in from this direction over here. So you can see the 505 has nicely been written there on the side with the small blocks. That curves into this rear module. And there's this cool section at the back here that I'm, I'm still intrigued to see what it does. But I think it's just to create the curved effect here of this panel and give some detailing with them landing gears into this section. Of course, we've got rear thruster housing. We've got some hydrogen in this area. And we've got this lower sort of deck unit underneath here as well you can see there's got a large thrusters really cool to see this sort of thing so if we actually just scoot into here you can see that this is a detachable module under here i believe it's some sort of shuttle that can be deployed i don't know if it's a, a, exactly a rescue ship but we'll have a look in a moment when we go inside it and we'll see exactly how it works so coming around the back let's have a look at that big thruster pack so we've got six thrusters up at the top, including one small one there. Nicely detailed with a connector as well. I like how they've done these little stair sort of curved wings over the top. Lots of curves in this one. And you guys know I'm a sucker for some curves. And you can see down at the bottom, we've got some atmospheric and hydrogen engines. So this bottom pod is definitely capable of atmospheric flight to some degree. So let's continue having a look around. Let's actually go inside. We're not looked underneath though. So yeah, we've just got a standard sort of thruster pack down there at the bottom. Hang on, we've got these tilted thrusters very very cool indeed on hinges this is going to be an interesting one to see how it works exactly it's going to be a little bit hard to control perhaps well we'll have to find out anyway 
So we're going to enter through the airlock on this side. So as we come in through the airlock, we'll notice a little suit changing area. And then we're into the main guest hall area. There is an airlock to take to the crew area, but I'll show you that later. So we've got staff only on that side and we have a toilets near the entrance. Crucial when you're loading on passengers. That's the first thing a lot of passengers want to do when they're boarding a cruise ship. But look at this detailed staircase made out of these small blocks. So that leads to this grand wooden entrance. Wood is great for making things look really grand in Space Engineers. So as we come in through the door, we are met by this crazy construction to be honest this reminds me somewhat of the area of labs if you ever played escape from tarkov for some reason but you've got this glass on the top that's got this um weed sort of trellis ivy effect on the top makes you feel a little bit more um you know indoors and well not indoors outdoors and part of nature but then you've got all this modern decor going around here i'll show you the scale against my character as well so you can see so there we go. It's scaled pretty damn well. If I just drop to the ground here, I can also navigate this with my character that I think is really important with some of these designs. So I'll go back to my spectator. You can see my character now and there. Look at the intricacy of this woodwork. It feels like this guy's a carpenter of spaceships in some degree. You've got a little welcome mat. You've got the bar and grill area here. Plenty of coat. You can imagine a full crew serving different things away great for like a little production if you were going to do a little space engineers movie so over into this section we've got like a, a smoke area it's like a bathroom break oh it's a spa oh very nice we've got a little spa hot tub jacuzzis either side there if you need to and then over to the main waterfall attraction that's like a little bit of a food court we've also got a hangar bay here and this just leads down where you could have a small shuttle that ferries people in and out of the area or for maintenance or whatever you need. So coming back up the stairs, we've got this grand staircase leading up this centre area over here as well. We've got this nice ball in the middle, like a reception sort of waiting area, complete with clock. And then we start to get to more of the cabin quarters. And just look how cool this looks. We've got a little fire extinguisher decal. Is it a decal? No, no, it's it's one of the it's a block turned on its side, painting red to look like a fire extinguisher. That's a really cool idea. You have to say indeed. We obviously got a red light that takes you into some of the behind the quarter crew areas, not accessible by the normal passengers. So you can see in here this actually takes you into the reactor room, and the reactor room is damn cool. Look at that, you've got like these little battery power indicators. The whole thing's on at an angle or golden up, and you've got these viewing windows so you don't get radio radioactive of some kind. And then a little maintenance lift back here. So we'll go back to the, the crew quarters just for the moment, and then we'll have a look at the service elevator. So this is what the crew get, well not the crew, this is what the passengers get. These are the smaller cabins. So you've got three beds locked in here and a little bit of a television. It's, it's good to, you can enjoy all the amenities of the boat, of course, in a more compact quarters. Coming around the front here, you've got another little suit up airlock and type bathroom. Over on this side, we've got access to the back of the bar there in case you need to service people on the upper deck and of course it looks like there is a mount there for perhaps a disco ball as well we've got the large open windows that i showed you from the outside before a little bit judgery it might put a bit of you know unnerving to the crew when they see that but hopefully they walk past this area quickly or they're not in this area because this is the crew only quarter at the front so we'll be back here when it comes to piloting the ship. But we've got various different sensor systems. We've got radar systems over this. We've got the starboard airlock for the crew to pop out and make quick repairs. That's definitely very useful. And we've got various other systems. Just look how they've been put on a little rotor here. So they can be rotated at an angle and just add a little bit more detail. Of course, they've got themselves a coffee baby. So they can fill up the coffee, keep on them long shifts. And there's a little bit of a plaque here. You can pause it if you want to read it. It tells you who's built it and retrofitted it. So coming up to the bridge area, so the bridge is very exposed in this design, but remember it is a passenger liner, so the idea is it's not going to get shot at. But you do have quite a bit of protection from the curve at the top, but the worrying factor of these sort of ships is if they do get shot at, even you know a little bit, that all these parts that are connected by rotors can just fling off and rip your own ship apart. But you, you don't want to be shot at in your passenger liner anyway. You're here to take people on happy trips without the clangy shakes. So coming over this area, we've got a little cryopod, so as some of the staff are stuck in state, others will be piloting I'm guessing that's the strategy for this particular ship so as we come back into the quarters here we're gonna have a quick look at the service lift so we're gonna go past the um, lower class cabins uh, well they're all premium cabins I'm sure on this there's just some that are bigger than others and we're on the little elevator so here's my little character 
he's actually teleported to the floor above. That's great. Let's um, see if we can get him onto this one. And caution. Just look at the little detailing on that. That's lovely. And we go up the elevator. I always try to ignore the the movement, but this gives us a little access panel to the reactor room, so we can control various different features. A, co a cool little effect. And if we press it again, we go up to this little access tunnel that takes us through here. So, of course, they've got automatic doors. So, if you're like me and you're impatient about doors, you're now in the rear maintenance area with all the engines. And it's got good catwalk access around here, so you can see if there is damage or if there is a problem that needs fixing, if you can. So, there's a few things, more things I want to show you. We've had a look at the bridge, we've had a look at the reactor room at the back. I want to actually go up to the upper cabins and just show you what they're all about as well. So if we come into this section, you can see we've also got some smaller cabins out on this side. And you can see they're all located here. But if we go one deck now, it'll save us the navigation. We've got these much larger, more luxury cabins tucked in on these decks here. So you can see this, either the staircase, they've got two large cabins on the side. Actually, I think it's two or three. Yeah, they've got three cabins along the side there. And a little concierge sort of area, I guess. Very, very cool indeed. Now, if we go all the way up here, there is a slight maintenance area. You can see all of these. Oh, God, this just scares me when I see things like this. This is, of course, the hinges that are creating that curved effect. Oh, damn scary. Don't don't make me look at it. I'm not looking at it anymore. I'm stopping. So, we're going to have a quick look in the little pod below. So, we'll poke ourselves into the hole. Now, this could be simply just a booster pod that can be detached after space flight. I'm still trying to work out exactly what it is. It might, yeah, it looks like it could just be a booster pod. It's just got extra hygiene, something that can be taken off maybe after they've busted out the atmosphere and either left at the edge of a planet for them to collect at another time. So that's a pretty cool little idea. Let's um, head to the bridge though and give this thing a little bit of a test flight. Hopefully I haven't missed anything. I usually do though. It's just part of these massive ship builds. So as we come over to the bridge, we hop down here, and there's plenty of controls to understand here. I'll try to guide you through a few of them. So first thing when we hop in, we've got orbital altitude mode. So as we change modes, it will um, basically activate different systems. So with this, we've got basic control. We haven't got our rear thrust. But if we go to our menu, we have, of course, flight command orbit. We have flight command land, and we have cruise mode. So if we activate cruise mode start to see some engines kick in so you can see the engines have kicked in at the bottom but we can also activate our other modes as well now the most important one I believe is this one let me just see if that fires up some of my engines I guess maybe they're set on a booster then and I can't actually move them until I get a, a movement in time. The thing with ships like this, with all these different patrols and control layouts, unless you've built the ship and you know how to pilot it, it, it can get a little bit hard. So as I activate my various different components now, trying to fire up different systems around the ship, yeah, you can feel it is a, he is a heavy blob in this setting. I'm just going to quick flick through the menus and see um, what else there is. So of course we've got a jump drive so we could just jump between locations. We've got the toggle spotlights and we've got the parachutes if we need to move. Oh, there's our booster engines, number five. So okay, so that is an instrument power pack. You hit that, the boost activates and you start moving forward. Of course, if we turn off our inertia dampeners, we start flying. So we've got good acceleration. We've got a very slow turning, but I'm guessing that's what you'd get from a cruise liner like this. Just look at the exterior of that. Well, should we have a go at releasing the, the pods from underneath if we can? Um, so let's check our merge uh, merge blocks. So we've got various different... We're going to have a lot of merge blocks here. Emergency rotating lighting. Uh, browse time, open, close, delays. Oh, cool. So if we press number one, I remember seeing um, another system come up before that gave, that gave us quite literally holographic wings. Is it this one? No, that's the self-repair system. So there we go. Quite a complex build. I'd have to know, learn more about this. Cruise mode timer, flight command line, and flight command orbit. So yeah, it's definitely something to sit down and actually have a look at. Let's act activate our inertia dampers and see what sort of deacceleration we've got. So yeah, it's, it's really responding to me like this is a cruise liner. We've got a slow turning speed. We've got the jump drive available to us. It's just an absolutely beautiful design. I really recommend that you go and check this out on the workshop if you want to give it a test flight for yourself or over and have a look at the controls. It'd be interesting to try and get that module underneath functioning 
Um, there's no controls I've missed in the cockpit. This is something I always seem to miss. I like layouts for things when we, we're traveling around. Maybe it's operated from another one of these seats. Well, can we have a quick look? Okay, what's this got? So that's got solar collector timer blocks. Let's hit number four on that and see what happens. Okay, not seeing anything happen there, but that could be to do with the speed. Let's give it let's give it one more hit. I know you're not supposed to hit the timer blocks a thousand times. Oh, oh, there we go. It's opening up on the top. Oh, this is gonna be glorious, I can feel it. Slow down ship. Right, let's see what's going to happen here. I think, if, if this is what I think is going to happen, the solar panels are going to then fold out. That would be amazing. Let's have a look from outside. So, we, we're, nearly, we're nearly stopped here. We'll open up our airlock, seal that up behind us. Thank you. Push on out. And this is what's happening here. Oh, look at that. Oh, that is beautiful. I knew there was going to be hidden features like this in the ship. When I found the elevator... There we go, they're going to open out fully, and then are they going to like move to the side like a fan, perhaps? I'm unsure, unless they're just, they're just going to collect like that. Because it looks like that final timer block is yet to be activated, you see how it's gone red on? Unless it's been turned off, that is. I'm just seeing if there's anything else activating or going on while I'm, I'm having a look around. So I'm not too sure if that's fully fully fired and that's how it's supposed to be, or it's just... You know, semi-operated because Aaron hit the button bloody twice, and because he's stupid. Right, let's pop ourselves back inside and have a look at that other control seat on the other side and see if that does anything different. So, seal up the door behind us, come into our cockpit area, and we've got this. We've got this seat left. So this seat's wired up to nothing. So there's definitely some more hidden features on this that I haven't yet seen. You'll have to check them out when you have a look at it yourself. There'll be a link down in the description of this video. Go and check it out and go and support the creators on the Steam Workshop who are building fantastic creations like this. Anyway, I'll see you next time.